Now that you have completed the analysis in terms of the stability for the overturning, sliding, middle third and the bearing pressure of the retaining wall, you can now proceed with the analyzing the load in order to determine the moment and shear acting on the wall, toe and heel of the retaining wall. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. To solve these questions, first you need to know the forces acting on the retaining wall and also its base. The stress acting on the retaining wall is the active pressure, which you have already calculated in the early stage of the analysis where you can straight away obtain the P1 and P2. The P1 and P2 is given here as calculated from the equation. Next, you need to obtain the bearing pressure acting on the base of the retaining wall. It is obtained from the calculations of the bearing pressure using this equation. In this case, as the eccentricity is negative value, that means the bearing pressure now is in this direction. And the value are given here. Next, you need to determine the stresses at the interface join of the toe and the base, as well as the heel and the wall. Assuming the stress are linearly distributed, you may do interpolations in order to acquire the equivalent stress at the interface joint here. Next, you need to determine the concrete weight. The concrete weight is obtained by multiplying the thickness of the base with the unit weight of the concrete, which is 25 kN per meter cube. Then, obtain the weight of the soil. The weight of the soil is obtained by multiplying the depth of the backfill with the unit weight of the soil. And lastly, you need to obtain the surcharge. The value can be adopted directly as it is an UDL load. With that, this gives you the stress diagram for the concrete weight, soil and also the surcharge. The relevant value are given here. The principle or superpositions applied. The summations of the stress diagram here, plus here, plus here, will give you the new stress diagram acting on the retaining wall. The bearing stress is acting upward, while the weight of the concrete, soil and also the surcharge are going downward. Therefore, their relations are in the subtraction mode. You sum the stresses here, you obtain this value. You sum the stresses here, you obtain this value. You sum the stresses here, you obtain this value. And when you sum the stresses here, you obtain this value. You may ignore this part as we are interested at the joints between the members to obtain the bending moment and also shear force at the interface joint. The summations of all the stresses will give you the outcome as per outline in this figure. The active pressure will impose stress on the wall. 
the soy at the bottom the base will act on the toe of the base while the soy from the back field will act on the heel of the base now we proceed with calculating the bending moment and shear force acting on the wall it is determined by multiply the F1 with the lever arm distance to the interface between the base and the wall plus F2 times the lever arm the shear loads it will be the summations of the stresses the force is calculated by the area of the stresses as for the toe the resultant force of the stresses is to be multiplied with the lever arm to the interface joint the shear force it will be the resultant force by the trapezoid same principles goes to the heel for the stress in the form of trapezoid you can always consider it as a two element which is constitute of the rectangular and also triangular shapes this shall help you to determine the exact locations of the resultant force acting on the base with that you may design separately for the wall tall and heel for the moment and shear or if the depth of the wall tall and heel are the same the reinforcement can be designed by using the largest value of all to be applied throughout the entire retaining wall